This is part of the river series. This is a distressed crappie. Let's make something cool today. New twist on an existing pattern. The pattern is a standard. It's a timeless classic that everybody uses, that everybody's got in their tackle box. This is how to make it look a little bit more tricked out, a little bit more distressed, which is hence the name of the distressed crappie. And we're gonna start, we've already done white primer and then I've thrown red on the entire bait. And that's gonna be the veining that's gonna be underneath the mask that we're going to use, we're going to use a couple of different things today, this being one of my favorites. Now you could go a little bit thinner, so I'm not sure that I'm going to be able to achieve that with this. If I can open it out, maybe. Yep, I can. Good. So that's what we want to do then. Just want to have a single. This has already got some paint on it, so I don't have any issues cutting this in half. It'll still go and go. Uh, the only thing is, if you have a super humid climate, much like I do here in Arkansas, make sure this is extremely dry. Let the whatever you've used prior, let that dry out for a couple of days. So let's see, the best way to wrap this out, I think is gonna be like this. Have a little bit more width to it. Just kind of pop this around the tail. This is that metallic mesh. There is a link below. It's on the top three requested. You guys always ask for this and you know that I love using it because it's something completely different uh, as opposed to what most everybody else is using, which is this basic netting. I like to do a little bit different um, scaling with this. And because this is a bit thicker than a lot of the, the netting that you see at like the fabric stores or wherever it is that you get yours, you can actually do a lot of layering and angling and kind of achieve more of a depth with this. Don't really need to do that on this, but just to, just to tell you where I'm at in my head with patterns. And I always keep a bunch of these. These are my go-tos. And we're gonna start by just masking off and tightening up on this mesh get it as tight as you can because you don't want any paint to kind of leak underneath and most of you guys already know what I'm talking about if you're new to the channel new to the show new to airbrushing then you don't want paint to leak underneath of this because you really want that veining that visible when you're finished with your layers so I'd like to just kind of pinch that as tight as I can and then and make sure that your red is completely dry. I let this dry overnight. And I do that on most of my patterns and I'm gonna be doing this if I have the time to do it. If not, I give it a good heat set for 30 seconds to a minute. You don't want it on a super high setting, especially if you're using a heat gun. Um, I use a hair dryer, it's fine. The air does more, uh, I think, good than the actual heat does sometimes. Heat just makes it quicker, but it'll also expand the plastic depending on what quality of blank you have, so be careful of that. Something to just be mindful of. We are gonna be using some stenciling today. Not a ton of it, but I'm gonna prep that. Set that off to the side. Actually gonna be probably recording a couple of these because I was watching, okay, so if you guys are forage fish fans, check out on YouTube, and I'm not gonna list them because I'm not even sure what I was watching, but there's several uh, aquarium-related topic channels, uh, like Aquarium Co-op and, and multitude of, uh, Rachel O'Leary is on there. She's been on there for a long time. Um, really knows her stuff, super, super intelligent. Not like book smart as far as she didn't go to school for biology or for fisheries but she's just like many of us has been practicing fisheries and aquariums and conservation and sustainability and all that kind of stuff and she's got basically an entire fish store in her house and her husband and kids are great with it so it, it, anyways I was watching one of hers and she had a flag fin 
which are they're small almost like mosquito fish they're in the minnow family there are so many minnows I think I actually even want to do a series but that's going to be the next one after this is a small waters and then the next one after that so three videos in that I'm going to be probably taping this weekend and you'll see them at some point within the next week or so. Um, I want to do one for Michael Jensen. He sent me a bull shad, or one of the bull family of baits. I'm not sure which one might be a gill. But we're doing like a hybrid from juvenile to adult in the Mayan cichlid um, spectrum of cichlids. Florida, obviously, is where he resides. So that's going to be a fun build as well. Um, let's get started with this though. So whenever you have a dark base layer under here, it's always good to come back with some opaque white if you're doing veins or any kind of a netting on here. And just go over, touch it up the whole thing with an opaque white. Because that gives you basically a clean palette, but it still allows that veining to come through. And white is a little bit easier to lay down other colors on top of. As you, most of you, I'm sure know, I'm just, as I spray this quickly, I didn't put much in the cup because we're going to be coming back. Now I am going to heat set this, heat setting, heat setting, you guys always ask me to tell you. Um, I am going to heat set this off camera. First round of heat set is complete. I can actually set this back off to the side. We're not going to need anything else except for maybe let's pull this out so I can throw some paint off of it so because it's a crappie we don't need a whole lot else going on on this except for maybe just a little bit of accenting but because it's a distressed crappie you'd be expecting to find more things like some off color some bruising uh, maybe just a hint of some purple or you know I've really been digging on this lately I like my magentas and purples and stuff because they really if you get the right ones now this is a quick I was talking about a German one I'm not sure I'm ready to like let that cat out of the bag yet but uh, this right here is fairly inexpensive it's the De La Rowney and it's FW ink it's actually ink but you can shoot it just fine through an airbrush even at lower reduced it's fairly thin the only thing you have to watch with these some of these are pearls and iridescence this particular one is an iridescent um, and it might clog at lower pressures depending on which airbrush you guys have. Mine, I don't have that many problems, but I try and make a point to keep my cleaner on hand in a little squirt bottle. So just in the cheeks and I think back towards the tail, I'm going to throw on just a little bit. Not, not, a, not a lot because this is a crappie. It's a, a lighter pattern here. Just going to reduce my pressure run right around 15 right now I just kind of hit that both cheeks and then back towards the tail and that kind of is going to get covered over but it's okay because the pearl is going to show through I promise when you're done Make sure we put the cap on because it's been one of those weeks where I've been dropping everything. I've dropped pieces of the airbrush. It's, you know, it happens. So I am going to clean that because it is a pearl and iridescent. It's got some glitter in it. Try and give that a, a good clean between colors. And then I'm going to use some pearl lime. Also one of my favorite crappie colors. And it's a little flashy. So if you're in stained rivers, which a lot of them are, especially in the spring and early summer. And I would still consider July, uh, we're probably mid-summer, maybe. And I'm also not gonna overkill this. I do want it to kind of bleed onto that purple a little bit, but I'm not gonna do a whole lot. This is a minimalist type spray. It shouldn't take you too long to achieve, and it's fairly simple. And then some moss green, just a couple of drops. And on that, I'm just accenting at 15 PSI. With the nose around the eyes. A stripe right here across the back. And now we're going to start angling. So I want to kind of move this and then shoot across the back here. 
You can shoot on the belly too, just light. Don't don't overkill it because you want that that white to be visible. And then just flip it. Just flip it and do the same thing. Kind of blow that off. Shoot a little juice in the chamber. This is a wad of cleaner. It's not cut straight. I buy them 32 ounces at a time. Sometimes you can get them as low as 13 or 14 dollars lately because of their increased popularity. They've been running between 18 and 20 bucks. But for 32 ounces, it's not bad. A lot of people do reduce it. Um, you can reduce it with like a Windex as long as it's ammonia free. Um, water, it depends on what paints you're using. If you're using pretty much Createx paints, I wouldn't cut cleaner with water because water has a tendency to chunk up acrylic paint. And this is water-based acrylic airbrush paint. So just, just a little heads up for you guys. And then as we go through, our next color is that Detail Black Magenta. That's so this is a go-to if you are wondering what paints you should get when you start out i would recommend black true black and an opaque true white and an opaque and then a transparent primary colors which is red blue yellow sometimes you'll get green in that and then a couple of lighter colors like sand or bone. I mix my own out of sand. A lavender accent is always good. And a couple of lighter blues. Let's see if I can find it. Opaque, sky blue, everything else transparent. So transparents, reds, blues, yellows, green, just a standard green. You can mix white down with it and make it lighter. You can add a drop of black. Be careful how much black you add because it does darken quicker than it lightens. And it's just the way it is. And then for must have for detailing, black magenta. And if I can find it, I'm gonna show you my sepia. Raw umbers in there as well. Detail sepia. If you have to have two detailing colors in the world, sepia and black magenta is it. In my humble opinion. So now we're just going to come over the back of this with the black magenta and re-accent just a couple of spots. And I know that the dog is going to ramp up in a second because my neighbor is blowing the grass off of her driveway. And as soon as this little fella hears it, he's, he's going to make a little noise. So if I have to cut out in the middle of a sentence, you'll understand why. So I'm just kind of going through here at random, not really doing a whole lot of crazy stuff, but I'm just putting in that off color to give it a little bit more of a bruised, distressed look. And we're gonna clean this out of the chamber, come right back at it. Heat set. Now before we go further and add the crappie detailing, the marking with the hard stencil that we're going to be using from Brian over at Anarchy, Russ Allen also has a good one. It's very difficult for me to say one over the other. Both of them make incredibly awesome stencils, so that's your choosing there. I, I absolutely will not recommend one over the other. Love them both dearly. Great, great guys. Um, but before we stencil that, I want to add just a little bit more white as a stressor because this is, this is dark um, and we want that off color bruised, but this is, I've mixed this down a little bit with some reducer. So this small bottle is not a true opaque white. Uh, this jacquard is regular jacquard, which is thinner than, everything is thinner than Createx folks. But um, that. And then just coming back at the opposite angle. So I shot the black magenta down this way and I'm shooting the white this way towards the nose from the tail. And all I wanna do is kinda dust that up a little bit. I didn't have much in the chamber at all, just a couple of drops. 
and we'll heat set it. And then we're gonna pull this off. I'm just quick heat set. I didn't add that much on and white dries really, really fast, so. White dries fast. You guys been listening to Parallel Lines? I appreciate the listen, I really do. Been writing some stuff and uh, have been in contact with some of me old bandmates and um, just kind of working through some logistics. So look at how cool this is turning out. There's your red veining, and um, which is why it's, I think, a little bit easier to pull off some realistic properties with this as opposed to the just the octagon shaped netting. So I think that looks phenomenal. You could probably just put a shad dot on this if you wanted to do a shad instead of like a Tennessee shad deal. That was that's the other option that I would highly recommend for this bait. You could stop right here, not put on any of the crappie stenciling and do a shad dot and call it good. And this would be a super, super twist on a distressed shad, Tennessee shad. But we are, we're gonna drop this back onto the helping hands. And, uh, and I'll tell you, I don't know if the camera's picking this up or if it can, but now that you've shot, see when you shoot from the opposite direction, that's where your depth really, really comes in. And I'm, I get amped about it because it just looks cool. Um, if you guys do that, you shoot dark one way and then come back over top of the dark with a little bit of light and shoot across from the opposite direction and boy does that really, really give you some depth on that bait. Gives it a three-dimensional property that you would not otherwise have. And now we're just going to make it look like a crappie. But that's okay. It's a cool crappie. People ask me why I am who I am, <laughs> I guess is the best way to phrase that or why I do the things I do and it's just because after years and years and years of seeing big buck baits and everybody looks like everybody else for the most point there are some nuances in the way baits are pressed and molded um, there are some amazing things that happen there are actually some pretty cool iridescent paints that are out there especially when you get into the JDM stuff and then of course the the knockoffs that everybody wants to copy the JDM stuff because it's just awesome. It's really good. Um, but I get into different looking baits that fish haven't seen. You're still going to recognize it as the pattern that it is, but it's different. It almost looks more realistic to me. Now some people say that it's a wilder pattern. I don't think so at all. I, I think that it gives it uh, a little bit more of a, a realistic property about it, in my humble opinion. Now this is just some jet black, also reduced, not much, just a couple of drops in this one or two ounce bottle. I think it's a, just two ounce, two ounce. I'm going to keep it at the same, make sure we have a good spray, good flow. And usually when I'm dealing with a bait that's rounded, I'm going to start on the bottom and then work up in layers and then just kind of move that stencil around and give it that. And I know, I'm, I'm not covering the top. You're like, oh, it was so pretty. And it still is. It just has crappie. Cause I, well, this is for a customer. Just about everything you guys see me do on this channel is for a customer. And this is one of the baits that you can find on the website, www.jekyllbaits.com. Yes, I know. Why is you always pitching, Jen? Because I gotta eat, y'all. And I love to teach, so I, this is how I give back to you guys. This is, I try to, I know that businesses can become kind of clouded and it seems like it's all about the money. This is how I try and make it right with you guys. I try and give you back everything that I can give and teach you what I know so that you guys can kind of offset some of your costs. I, I say that half jokingly because if you've been in this game for a little while, you know that it's not cheap to make these and make them look real pretty. 
Um, but it's, it's a good way to offset spending so much money on big box, if that makes any sense to you guys at all. Pew pew! Later. So as we pull off this tape, I would say that probably 90% of the time when I'm dealing with brand name baits that I repaint, do I actually reuse the eyes that I get off of there. Number one, when I, when I pull them off, sometimes they're a little bit messed up. They're not perfectly round, but I got a pair of yellowish, perfect for this crappie bait, off of a yellowish eyes off of a Berkeley Juke that I'm going to be doing. I just showed you that Juke 100 Shallow Runner in the uh, flag fin pattern a little bit later on this weekend film that and the eyes that came on it were really really good so i'm going to reuse them because they're perfect for this crappie they will not be perfect for the pattern that i'm putting on the juke and they're six millimeter and they will really step up how this bait translates when it's done and if you're considering reusing stuff, just make sure that you have eyes in good condition. And I'm giving this the once over because now would be the time to pull it back off before the super glue dries. Okay, folks, so this is how the distressed crappie looks with a better camera. I'm not saying the GoPro is a sucky camera. It's good for the basics, for showing you guys what I'm doing. But when you want that close-up view of what I'm trying to describe to you, this is the, a much better angle for you guys to look at. And that is, that Berkeley Juke eye is just a perfect eye for this particular pattern. Really digging it. That is what I've got for you guys today. I'm not going to show you the dip. You guys know how to dip stuff. Um, and if you don't, check out all of the other videos that I have on dipping. I promise you there are tons and tons just for you. I really appreciate the view, you guys. I hope I've been able to teach you guys some stuff on this. This is the Distressed Crappie, and it is headed out to Chris uh, next week. Uh, when you guys are seeing this, this was... When did I shoot this? Uh, it's just after July 4th in real time, but I have no idea when this is actually going to upload. So there's a lot going on. Love you guys. Mean it. Talk to you guys soon, and I'll see you guys on the next video. Cheers, and happy casting from Jekyll Bates.